I don't know who would be here, but can I just ask like, what brought you here today? Why are you just hired to come? What's your name and what organization are you with? Zoe Chase. Zoe Chase. Mm -hmm. And the show is called This American Life. It's a radio show. And what radio program is it on? It's its own show. It airs all over the country. Who sponsors it? Is it on what program? It's a for-profit company. It's its own independent company. It airs on public radio stations. They so it's on NPR? Well, yeah, it's on public radio, but it's on NPR program. It's its own company. Okay. So what is your question? Did you talk to me before? Yeah, we met. I mean, it was like two Are you ago. sure? Yeah. Which reawakened? It was the first one I went to was in Nashville. Nashville? Yeah. I'm not sure if I was in Nashville and that was not the first one. No, it was my first one. Okay. It wasn't the first one. But there was like a hotel meet and greet afterwards with flyers. And you're based out of where? New York. What brings you down here when you have that trial up there that you I should don't be get focused to cover on? The trial. Not my job. How do they allocate that? Well, like, do you get tasked? to come down here? Not really. I got to get to make my own choices, but our show is like a documentary show more. It's like a magazine. Okay. And so we don't do breaking news. So, so do you want to do a sit-down, long-form interview with me? Well, actually, I was just going to ask you kind of like what brought you here, like why you were here and what you made of it. But we could I'll put a post up about it uh -huh. with that question. On and then you can follow that on X, okay. Telegram, yeah. Truth, mm -hmm. Getter, my Rumble channel, right, and all the other ones. And I can provide you that. I ha I just followed you on Twitter. So I was like, okay, like, which I'm, one? Uh, Ivan Raiklin. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because the other one's still censored by Brian Naughton at the FBI. Sorry, we're not legal until oh, so you're for the okay. Sorry. Okay. So my Raikland account is still being censored by the FBI's Brian Auten, mm -hmm. Laura Demlo, Joe Pienka, and Elvis Chan. Well, so you started a new account? No, that still exists okay. because it was reinstated. Those are the individuals that are at the FBI that run the censorship industrial complex on behalf of this illegitimate regime. Do you know those names? No. I can provide you much detail on them. They were the ones also involved in the original illegal crossfire hurricane spying operation on General Flynn, Carter Page, George Papadopoulos, and Paul Manafort. I have receipts on every single individual. That's why they haven't really come after me yet, because if they bring me in, the entire regime comes crumbling down. Okay? So they are scared of me, not the other way around. That makes more sense. You, on your Twitter bio, I noticed today it said Secretary of Retribution. Yep. I, I will guarantee. Yeah, that means that I will guarantee consequences for a list of at least 350 individuals that are on my deep state target list. Okay. And when you read that deep state target list, remember, I'm an attorney and a retired Green Beret. Okay. Then I know. Well, me, that I might be interested in talking with you more about is your deep state target list. If it's, you have time. Uh, Elon Musk has it. Michael Schellenberger has it. Matt Taibbi has it. Mm -hmm. The Judiciary Committee has it. The Weaponization Committee has it. The Oversight Subcommittee that is part of the House Administration Committee has it. Mm -hmm. The House Freedom Caucus has it. The Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, likely has it. And it's just a matter of time for a joint... Uh, press conference to take place between Speaker Johnson and Elon Musk to go ahead and disclose and release the Twitter direct messages of those individuals on my deep state target list proving the seditious conspiracy going back to 2016 mm -hmm. the illegal spying operation on the Trump campaign you're also going to find the involvement of Mike Pence and his chief of staff Joshua Pitcock in that conspiracy along with Josh Pickock's wife, Catherine Seaman, who was the senior Russia analyst for Peter Strzok, who was one of the two individuals that was deployed by Jim Comey and Andrew McCabe to get, to get General Flynn to lie or to get him fired as per Bill Priestap's notes, which was the deputy assistant director of counterintelligence at the, at the FBI. That's a long list. I can go in much more detail but that's generally the crux of it. 
do you like do you get to meet with Jim Jordan and talk about this stuff I meet with everybody all, all these guys every single member that you think I talk to or may talk to I talk to them mm -hmm. and what do you guys talk about like what's the reason that you talk to everything them? that I put out publicly yeah. I also provide that to them uh -huh. and I guess I don't do I mean anything is... behind the behind the shit like yeah. behind closed doors that's what I mean is, is like what are you hoping to get out of talking to them like why do you do it I what? want to guarantee Elon Musk discloses the direct messages for the mother of all Twitter files so that the entire country can see what just occurred to them from starting from the illegal spying operation mm -hmm. the corrupt DOJ and FBI the raid on Mar-a-Lago was to seize the evidence that was declassified by Donald Trump in the last few hours of his first term, mm -hmm. which involved the crossfire hurricane details, okay. which would list all the names that I've mentioned so far. Okay. Whether it was Lisa Page, who was Andy McCabe's chief counsel at the time, along with Peter Strzok, a guy by the name of Joseph Pientka III, who is currently the number three uh, individual at the San Francisco field office. So you have a chief, you have the special agent in charge, you have a ASAC, Assistant Special Agents in Charge, and then you have the ASAC for Counterintelligence. Mm -hmm. That guy is a guy by the name of Joseph Piantica III, who was the second agent that was deployed to interview General Flynn on January 24th, 2017, in order to get General Flynn fired or to get him to lie. Right. That was an entrapment. And that's the same agent that was deployed in August of 2016 to the Trump campaign to do what they call a counterintelligence briefing, a defensive one, mm -hmm. but with the secondary purpose in order to, and this was him, Pianka, along with Trump, Chris Christie. You know that Chris Christie's attorney during his Bridgegate scandal was Christopher Ray. I didn't know that. Well, now you know. And then the third person in that meeting was a guy by the name of General Flynn. Joe Pientka was deployed by the Crossfire Hurricane leadership, authorized by the general counsel at the time, Jim Baker, who then later became the Twitter 1.0 number two lawyer to coordinate the censorship industrial complex to cover up and censor and suspend those individuals that exposed their corruption. Okay? And it just keeps mounting and mounting and mounting the cover ups. This is just yet a they're trying to take out uh, Trump now because they were able to take out their first existential threat, which was General Flynn, because he would have been the first one to go ahead and expose this level of corruption mm -hmm. because he knows the system. Now that Trump knows the system after being four years in it, he is now an existential threat to that very DOJ, the National Security Apparatus. Remember, 39 individuals unmasked General Flynn. Okay. One of them was Jamie Raskin's wife, Sarah Raskin. Totally unlawful, unmasking. Look, mm. look that up. Okay. The 51 individuals that said the Biden laptop had all the earmarks of a Russian information campaign mm -hmm. were your colleague, colleagues over at Folitico published that on their website. Mm -hmm. One of those 51 individuals is John Brennan. Another one is a guy by the name of David Buckley. David Buckley ended up becoming the staff director for Liz Cheney's and Benny Thompson and Nancy Pelosi's January 6th cover-up committee. So it's a pretty small world, it sounds like. So David Buckley was tasked to create a list and do his deep state target list mm -hmm. of political targets. So now it's my turn. Mm -hmm. I have a deep state target list, and I'm coming for all of them. And what does that mean when I say coming for all of them? It means the most legal, moral, and ethical consequences to the maximum to include the maximum punishment for treason, we're going to, I personally guarantee that they're going to face those consequences. And you can take a look at that list. Like, are you going to sue them? Is that what you would do? Just wait for it. Okay. You will see it. It will be so visible mm -hmm. for the entire world to see and hear. I'll give you some examples. Okay. I'm going to incorporate the precedence that's already been set. So we're going to incorporate what was done to General Flynn. We're going to incorporate what was done to Steve Bannon, what was done to Peter Navarro, what was done to Mike Lindell, what was done to Scott Perry. Translation, expect to see live stream swatting raids of every single individual on that deep state target list because the precedence has already been set. Remember when Mike Lindell in the Hardee's parking lot 
the FBI went and conducted armed robbery of him in Minnesota. Remember when Peter Navarro was swatted in an airport? Remember when Steve Bannon on multiple occasions within the U.S. Capitol Police jurisdictional zone conducted swattings and allowed for swattings to take place of Steve Bannon and his residents? Remember the armed robbery and burglary of Roger Stone that was live streamed by your colleagues over at Criminal CNN. News Network? Yeah. That we're going to take in the collective and do that, okay? okay? It does not matter what happens in the election. It does not matter who That's wins the election. Is. This is going to take place at the hands of the American people with or without an election and with or without whoever wins the election. I guarantee you that that will take place at the county and state level because right now the federal government is not in a position because of its capture and its corruption. So imagine this, when you take a look at the direct messages mm -hmm. and the geotagged location data of the 350 plus members on that deep state target list and then you curate that Elon Musk and then do geotagging of the communications and then you present those communications to name the county of the 3,143 county and county equivalents in our nation. Mm -hmm. The 50 states and the six federal districts, right? Okay. And then you identify where a treasonous communication took place and then you present that to the local DA similar to good old Alvin Bragg. That then will create the nexus to showcase this criminal, conspiratorial, seditious conspiracy and treason charge. And that local DA, the local sheriff, will then be deputizing folks like Ivan Raiklin and those of us that were thrown out of the military mm -hmm. because we did not comply with the illegal DNA mutilation injection, the forced DNA mutilation injection. Do you mean the COVID vaccine? You're, I'm talking about the CCP-19 lab incident money-making scheme by Pfizer, the Pfizer fail, the murder and the mutilation, or whether it was just a myocarditis making heart exploding J and J jab. So those of us that were either thrown out or left because we would not participate in the DNA mutilation of our own physiological beings, there's 80,000 of us that are ready, willing, and able in order to be deputized by appropriate sheriffs throughout the country to be participator participants as lawful deputies to conduct the live stream swatting raids of every single person that we can identify that conducted the necessary uh, unlawful activity by county on my deep state target list. Two questions. Where did you get the 80,000 number? My first question. Yeah. So. 8,600, about 8,500 approximately were thrown out of the military. Okay. okay. Because they wouldn't do the vaccine. Because it wasn't a vaccine. The name of vaccine, the definition changed before the rollout and it was never approved by the FDA. There was never a product that was approved by the FDA to then be able to coerce and manipulate into other people's bodies. Okay. Don't believe me, look at the footnote on FDA's own quote unquote approval of Pfizer's comernity. Legally distinct and the product was never created. The, the Pfizer BioNTech was created, but that one was never approved. That was okay. only under emergency use authorization. Right. So I need to correct you on that one. You need to do some more studying, ma'am, okay? Mm -hmm. Next, 80,000, mm -hmm. okay? As far as the 80,000 goes, that's the minimum that I see of folks that left the military early through retirement, ended, ended their careers early because of the illegal mandate that was promulgated by and enforced by the entire chain of command. Those are also going to be, many of the members on the deep state target list are those military leaders, quote unquote leaders, I call them failures, within the Department of Defense and at the Pentagon that will face similar consequences for forcing and coercing unlawfully the mutilation of another person's body and thus minimizing and destroying our personal uh, uh, readiness so within the DOD. So this is people you're talking no. about? 
come on. Are you going to ask that question in that level of ignorance? 2016, crossfire hurricane? No, 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 no. I mean, you're saying the 80,000 that you referenced. I mean, you're, at this point, you're wasting my time if you don't even have that level of context. Take a couple hundred hours to research the subject. Follow my work on Rumble. Once you see that, I want you to identify one thing that I have incorrect. And then you can start coming after me with questions to scrutinize it because you have not done the necessary requisite research to, uh, for me to even give you my time. So I think uh, that's about it. Can I ask one last question? You don't have to It answer. better be intelligent. <laughs> well, I don't guess that'll be in the eye of the beholder. Um, you don't think, you were saying it doesn't matter what happens in the election. So you don't think you need sort of the protection of Trump's Justice Department to do some of what you're talking about? No, because we're going after the Justice Department. But like, they are the enemy. That's what you fail to understand. The individuals that I mentioned are the enemy of our constitutional order. We're coming for them maximally. And how we're coming for them is because we are engaging with counties and states in order to crush them. Mm -hmm. With via, via, like via the sheriffs, basically. What do you think Alvin Bragg's doing right now? Is that a federal officer? Exactly my point. Look at the counties in this country that are red versus blue. Mm -hmm. It is overwhelmingly red. So Alvin Bragg and the Dems are setting our precedent as we go on offense. Okay. Well, thanks, Ivan. It's going to be a doozy. And I love it when it uh, gets spicy. And there are, again, I you. out of the 80,000 of us, mm -hmm. we are clamoring to be deputized by sheriffs nationwide in order to conduct the necessary live stream raids, if they want to push us to that. So if I did want to follow up with you, and you- And I'll say lastly, there. yeah, there are over 1 million service members. I'm gonna say this. Mm -hmm. I, well, like you said Secretary of Retribution. The Secretary of Retribution consists of three divisions. Number one, the research arm. And should there be a mechanism where we create it, it's going to be the first division is, again, I, everything I'm telling you, I have already said it publicly. And I've, you know, I have many podcasts where I've said this. Yeah. So number one, we're going to have a research arm to continue to develop our targets. Okay. Okay. Number two, and, and that's going to be staffed by January 6th defendants, family members, as well as their lawyers, since they have already kind of conducted some of that research. Mm -hmm. So they're already kind of interned, if you will, over the last three and a half years. Mm -hmm. Number two will be the second division, which will include the action arm. The 80,000 of us that have decades of conducting this type of activity of actioning targets overseas. Right? Mm -hmm. And the third arm is going to consist of those that will live stream, right? Independent media, obviously not your organization, won't be included in that. But, we don't but they will ride things. along. They will ride along and live stream the swattings and raids of the second division that I just mentioned that are properly and appropriately deputized to conduct those raids. And then the first arm is obviously going to be the one that create those lists we're just using the playbook and the precedents that has already been developed to target those that conducted lawful first amendment activity on january 6th and everything downstream from that so if you say you don't need you know you're not waiting for trump's election like when are you planning to do it stand by okay. so just keep an eye on things okay so how could I follow up? With so you can follow everything I do online. Everything's public. But like, if and I, I advocate again. Question, I advocate for the most. These people are going to experience the most peaceful and patriotic, lawful, moral, and ethical experience of their life. The swatting and the reading sounds scarier than lawful and ethical and peaceful. It's, it's legal, moral, ethical. I said it was peaceful and patriotic. It may not be peaceful for them, but for me, it'll be peaceful. Okay. So, but if I message you on Twitter or something, that would be answered question. Publicly. You can comment on me, on my posts publicly. Okay. And I'm going to post this. 
Again, your name? Okay. 